Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. The core idea of preparedness is to be ready for things, to be prepared for things, to have stuff, whether that be knowledge, skills, uh, materials, or whatever, before you need them so that when you need them, you have them. We've seen a lot of examples over the past couple of years of things happening and people not being ready for it. There are some new things coming down uh, the pike, so to speak, and I wanted to talk about those today with you so that if you're in a position where you felt like you missed the boat in the past, there were you know events that unfolded and you weren't ready for them, here are some tips about the things that are going to be coming in in the next year that you might want to get ready for. Uh, but first I want to talk about, like, kind of, uh, the, there's kind of two different types of prepping videos out here on YouTube. I think they break into a couple categories. One are the types of videos that are uh, honestly, really entertaining to watch. Uh, the, I watch them all the time. The ones that kind of get you thinking, man, you know, things are really bad and we got to, you know, up our game and we got to get ready for things because there's bad things coming. Those are kind of like the fear videos. Uh, you know, some people call them fear porn. Uh, a lot of people will criticize those videos and I can see why because sometimes they just leave it at that. They leave it at fear and, you know, fear gets people excited, gets people watching the ad breaks, uh, but they don't have that secondary call to action. Uh, insofar as those, you know, light a fire under your butt and get you interested in learning more and getting ready for things, those are totally fine. But if you just end at those videos, you're really not doing yourself anything other than the service of entertaining yourself. The other type of prepping videos out there are the ones that actually teach you something, uh, you know, give you some knowledge that you didn't have before and put you in a better position when, you know, the shit does hit the fan. And, you know, we've seen occasionally it does. So it's important really to, uh, to watch both of those videos. I guess the fear ones you can do without if you don't need those. They're they're fun. They kind of get you focused and you know thinking about uh, you know the importance of all this kind of stuff. But again, if you just end at those, you know you're doing yourself a disservice. There are many channels out there uh, that have uh, you know one type of video. Many channels that have the other type of video, and some channels that kind of jump back and forth. I like to think that my channel kind of gives you a mix of both, a little bit of fear and a little bit of knowledge at the same time. But mostly in this video, I want to talk about a, a bit of knowledge that I want to share. And it's not my own knowledge, it's something I uh, stole from Ontario Homestead. And it regards big bags of flour or feed for your animals. I perpetually forget how to open these. I'm going to share with you how to open these in this video. But if you want to go directly to the source, you can go to Ontario Homestead's YouTube page. And he has a very concise uh, and, uh, well, you know, he's going to show you better. So go to his uh, page if you want to learn how to open up these feed bags. I'm going to do it here in front of you. The only thing that I'm going to be doing better than or, uh, Ontario Homestead, as a matter of fact, is I'm going to use a sharp knife. Look at the video below. That's a ridiculous... He's practically cutting these things open with a spoon. It's, it's, it's horrible. Um, but I'm going to use a sharp knife. But other than that, go to Ontario Homestead if you really want to open these up. He shows you better about how to do it. What I want to talk about, and I'm going to start here on the short end, as I learned. I, did, I, had a, I always have to watch Ontario Homestead's videos about how to open these bags every time I get a new bag. Because I always forget every time. Um, so uh, what I'm going to talk about isn't specifically how to open these bags. Because I'm not a pro at it. And I'm, you can see I'm having a little trouble. Uh, what I want to talk about, oh, there we go. Made possible by Interior Homestead. There we go. Uh, what I want to talk about is what we need to be getting ready for. Because we are moving into a period where I think that there are going to be uh, shortages on food. I've got two 25 ba uh, pound bags of flour right here, and it was a little difficult to get these. Um, I ordered them uh, on a number of occasions, and the orders kept getting canceled because the prices have been going up. Over the past couple weeks, the prices on flour have gone up 30%, at least in my area, but, uh, sourcing these 25 pound bags. Uh, initially, I was going to be able to get them for like 50 something for two bags, and uh, you know, these guys came, and it was like a button. So, uh, almost ninety dollars. So, uh, I, and I was happy to get them because I don't see the prices coming down anytime soon. And that's what I want to talk about in this video: is are you getting ready for the summer, for the fall ahead? We have all sorts of issues. Uh, some related to COVID. Some related to, you know, crazy weather patterns. You know, related to climate change, which may or may not be real, but. The planet's certainly acting like the climate is changing, so I don't know if it matters whether it's imaginary or real or whatever. Uh, you know, if it quacks like a duck and looks like a duck and all those other things like a duck, you might as well treat it like a duck. And the climate does seem to be changing, and it is 
causing problems for farmers. And farmers are the people that we rely on for food. So I would highly recommend get your pantry in order sooner rather than later, like now, like today. I'm going to put links down in the description below to a bunch of different things that you can get right now to get yourself kick-started. Uh, there's all sorts of places online that you can order bulk food and things like this. And I love these containers. I, these are, you know, they're they're dog food containers, but they are FDA approved uh, plastic. You know, I know there's some purists that just say never put any food in plastic ever. I wouldn't put like a liquid like soup because then you'd be making plastic soup. I don't mind putting dry uh, materials into these things. Is it as good as glass? No. It'd be great if I could get gigantic containers like this made out of glass, but the reality is it just Things like that really just aren't very freely available. So I use what I can get, something better than nothing, and I like using these. One of the things I like about the, uh, these large containers is that they can hold two 25-pound bags of flour or oats or whatever. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're kind of convenient because if I buy two 25-pound bags, I can put them in. Oops, glad that wasn't the knife. And, uh, you know, uh, it pretty much fills it up. So uh, what I do is I take my flour, and you're going to notice how much dust gets kicked up here in a moment. I take my flour and I put it in here. I always keep a scoop in here and I put desiccant packs. Uh, these are for reducing humidity in there. I always put one all the way at the bottom and I pour one bag of flour in and then I put another one at the top. When I go to pour this flour in, it makes a lot of dust. You'll see in the front here it's labeled white flour. I usually buy white flour and whole wheat flour. I like to try to let the bag kind of open up as much as you can. I think it probably somewhat minimizes the dust. There you go. As you can see, this is Great River Organic Mill Wheat White Flour. I usually like, again, getting whole wheat and some white, and I kind of mix them together when I make breads and, and whatever I'm making. All right, so that one seems pretty much emptied. I'm going to do another run at... Uh, this thing here. In the video from Ontario Homestead about how to open these bags, uh, seems like the bottoms of these bags are actually the place to go. He says when you've got these things, uh, they usually have like one long string on one side, one short on the other, and you go for the short. Again, it's nice to have a sharp knife. All right, and then you just kind of Peck at these away, and eventually it turns magically into that. Yeah. There we go. Again, thank you, Ontario Homestead, for that skill. It's really important to get out there and learn real skills. Don't just stick your YouTube prepping repertoire to, uh, you know, the fear videos. Those are fun, they're exciting, but it's not what you ultimately need, you know? You just need to have known that some bad thing was going to happen. You need to know what to do about it. What the hell is this? Great River Organic Milling Company. This stuff looks darker. It looks darker to me. Did they ship me the wrong one? Unleached wheat bread flour. Okay, you know, I think it's just, it just it's a little darker. I guess that's okay. You know, I, honestly, at this point, I'm just happy to get whatever I can because things are starting to have the prices go up and, and not be available as much. The other thing, there is one other thing other than food that I would highly recommend you think about right now, and it relates to Fukushima, is uh, Japan is about to start dumping their radioactive wastewater into the Pacific Ocean. Anybody with any kind of a brain in their head knew they were going to be doing that anyway. They promised they wouldn't do that. They said this, Terra, of course we would never do that. You know, we're going to be responsible and not do that. Years later, yeah, you know, they just run out of, or out of room. Of course, they're, they're you know, we can only store so much. I'm going to put the desk and pack in there, put my scoop in there, and put my lid on. Trying to keep it all as clean as I possibly can. Uh, so yeah, uh, Japan is going to start dumping radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. If you are a fan of any seafood, now would be a good time to stock up before they start dumping that stuff in. Uh, you know, stock up on fish or whatever you get, put it in your freezer, and you know, you'll have uh, food that is not contaminated with radioactive material. Now, uh, some people might say, uh, well, that's just ridiculous. You know, the Pacific Ocean is so big, how much can they possibly put in? You know, stop worrying about tiny little things like that. You know, you wouldn't even be able to notice it. Well, I have a Geiger counter, and I was running tests of seafood when Fukushima initially happened, that event happened, uh, and you could see the bump. Uh, you know, the radioactivity of the material I was buying went up, and then kind of 
kind of went back down. Uh, and that's data. That's good to, uh, it's good to keep that in mind. You know, people will say, you know, you got people that, you know, I mentioned earlier that would say, oh, it's ridiculous. The ocean is so big, you're never even going to notice about, about it. Stop worrying about nothing. Then you get other people that just say, the ocean's already so incredibly contaminated that, you know, uh, you know, why even need anything out of it in the first place? You know, it's like it, the event happened. It's like the Pacific Ocean's done. You know, don't eat anything out of it anymore. It's, it's going to be radioactive forever. Um, look at the data. Uh, and I collected real data on it, and you could see it uh, rise, and you could see it fall. Uh, you can only get that kind of data if you have the tools to gather it. Uh, it's it's hard getting information. You know, you go on YouTube and you get like the fear porn sites that tell you just be afraid of everything, give up. It's like you know, like why even bother? The world's already like you know horrible, and it'll never get better again. Uh, and then you have uh, the people that say like, don't worry, it's all fine. Just you know, jump right on in, and don't you know. It, Radiation? What's radiation? It's a huge ocean. You know, how can humans ever have an impact on our, our, our planet? You know, you got these people, they have an agenda, and they cherry pick facts. You can always find facts to, to fit your case. Uh, and they can make really convincing arguments. And, you know, uh, the risk for you and for me is that we have a, a preference, a bias, uh, you know, what we would like the world to be like. And, uh, you know, there's a natural tendency to go out there and try to seek out people that agree with us and will convince us of what we wish were true. Um, there's a huge human desire to do that. I know with COVID, I've experienced that myself. I want COVID to be over. And whenever uh, there is data out there that seems to suggest, ah, it's all just about to disappear. Uh, you know, my I can feel my, my being uh, drawn to that. Uh, I want to believe that more. And then when I see some uh, contradictory data that, oh, you know, there's this other strain and there might be kind of a bump and maybe we should be careful a little bit longer. Uh, you know, uh, there's a tendency in me anyway to want to disregard that. It's like, ah, well, you know, these studies, you never know about them. You know, <laughs> I think things are going to be all right. You got to really contra uh, uh, counteract that. It'd be actively counteracting your own um, uh, preferences, your own prejudices about, about the way that you would like the world to be, and actively seek out things that challenge, again, the way you wish things, uh, you know, would be. Because we're always going to try to convince ourselves that things are the way that we want them to be. Um, so, you know, get out there and try to get good data. And it's hard because, you know, there are all these talking mouths and they're all saying different things. You really got to get that back to the original data. And if you can generate it yourself, all the better. So right now, if you have the means, uh, you know, Geiger counters, they're not the cheapest uh, device in the world, but they do a certain thing. And sometimes you need that certain thing done for yourself. If you bring food into the house, it might be nice if you could test it. I'm going to put some links to Geiger counters that I have uh, confidence in below. Like I said, I have one myself. And, um, you know, it's important, you know, when it comes to the health and well-being in your family, you know, uh, when I go grocery shopping with my boy, you know, it's usually, it's just a couple, you know, cause we don't, we go out like, you know, once or twice a month and it's a couple, you know, several hundred dollars when we go out. My boy will always say, wow, that's so much money. And I tell him, it's like, well, that's what money's for. You know, that, that's why we have money is so that we can buy good, healthy foods for us. So that we can buy safety devices like a Geiger counter, so, you know, to, you know, keep ourselves healthy and protected in a world that's, you know, maybe getting a little more hostile than we would like it to be. We can put our heads in the sand and just pretend that that isn't there and just kind of live in the world of the past and pretend the world of the future is the same as the world of the past. Or you can acknowledge, you know, this isn't the way that I'd like things to be, but it's the way they are. And, you know, you deal with things as they, as they come. So think about it. Stock up on food now. Think about a Geiger counter soon um, because, uh, you know, the next year it's going to be a bumpy year. There are all sorts of, uh, there's all sorts of stuff coming down the pike. And, uh, you know, it's best to be ready for it. And when it comes to food, as long as something doesn't spoil, you know, you're going to eat it end eventually. And it's not like the prices are going to come down. One last thing you want to do when you uh, seal this stuff up is put a date on it. At the date of this recording, I'm not, I'm not going to put the actual day of the month, but it is, the month is 4. It's April of 20. 21, 421. And that's important because I have more than one bin of this stuff. I actually like to have three 50 pound bins of, of each type of flour, actually. I'm gonna put it up over here. So, uh, so I kind of cycle through them. So I always wanna know what's the newest one, what's the oldest one, and use up the oldest stuff first. So think about it. Links down below, uh, you know, to some uh, products that I think are helpful. 
you know, links to these bins, things like that. Even food, you can buy a lot of food, like right on Amazon. You can buy, you know, big things like quinoa, flour, stuff like that. You know, get it in because, uh, you know, I would never want to be in a situation with, where my family was hungry and I just didn't have the stuff on hand for them. Maybe, you know, bread for the, you know, 10th day in a row isn't, isn't necessarily a treat, but it's a heck of a lot better than not having anything. That's it. Good luck. Keep your eyes sharp and uh, evaluate the sources you're getting information from because everybody's, well, well pretty much everybody's got an agenda. I don't want to say everybody, but pretty much everyone has an agenda. My, my agenda is just to help you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are a lot of agendas out there and uh, a lot of people want, you, want to get your eyeballs watching the ad breaks that play in their videos. So, you know, li listen to who you are getting information from. Test the information that they have been telling you over time. A has it been checking out? I know that there are websites over there that are always saying the sky's about to fall. They've been saying it for more than a decade and the sky didn't fall, you know, bumps happen down the road. But you know, if people are constantly giving you advice that turns out not to have been true, I, I don't know, call me crazy, but maybe stop listening to them. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.